Hi, my name's Kate. I am a high school math teacher in the middle of my 18th year of teaching. Today's video, I thought that I would share with you guys some changes that I'm making going into second semester. So today is the second week back from a Christmas break in January. Let's see, it's January 15th. And our semester, second semester officially starts this Friday. Kind of weird, but that's when it starts. And so I, my classes really are not going to change a whole lot. I keep pretty much the same groups of kids unless a couple of kids dropped out. They stay in the same sections for the most part. So it's a little bit different. So it's not like I'm getting a whole bunch of new kids and need to really start over with all the different things. But I have some changes based on how first semester went that I want to implement second semester. And I thought that I would share those with you guys today. The first change that I'm going to make, and this is one that I really talked a lot about in one video, it was the stress and the hassle of when kids were absent for tests and quizzes. And this policy is going to change what I do before. It was just, hey, when you can do it, let's get this done. And then I still have, I mean, it's Wednesday, our semester is over tomorrow, and I still have 12 kids that have tests and quizzes to make up. It's insane. Um, and these kids are under the impression that they're still going to get an A in the class, even though they're sitting at an F right now. So going to eliminate all of that and that my new policy, and this has been backed up by administration. Actually, one of my administrators was like, oh, that's what I did in the classroom too. I am going to tell them if you are absent the very next day that you are in class, you are going to miss instruction and you are going to take that test or that quiz. So my hope is, first of all, that's going to get kids taking those right away and my other bigger hope is that the kids are going to see, okay, now they're actually missing important instructional days and they're going to stop skipping the day of the test or the quiz. So that's my biggest policy, my biggest change that I'm going to implement this year or this semester. Another change that I am going to do, and it's a small one, is about bathrooms. So in my own school with my pre-calc kids, I never really had to police the bathrooms. The kids didn't want to leave because they didn't want to miss the instruction. And here the kids just, they don't care and they seem to be gone forever. So I'm going to tell the kids that really we're going to limit the use of bathrooms during instructional time and you have seven minutes. Our bathroom that we go to is really not that far and there's only a couple of classrooms that use that bathroom. We have a lot assigned areas for bathrooms and all of that, but there aren't a whole lot of classrooms that use that bathroom. So the kids should be able to go to the bathroom and come back within seven minutes. So that is another small thing that I'm going to implement and just talk to them. Guys, if you know, use your passing periods and you know, use the independent work time at the end of class rather than right in the middle of instruction. A third change that I'm going to, well, and it's not even a change, it's more something that I'm really super going to enforce this semester. So Indiana adopted a new cell phone policy or a new, technically it's a technology policy, but our school is really focusing on cell phones where cell phones are not allowed in school. And it was up to each district to kind of figure out what that looked like for their district. And our school's policy for this is just no phones during instructional time. And that's up to the teacher to decide what that instructional time is. And I've told my kids instructional time is from bell to bell. And then it became a little bit complicated because now my students are using their cell phones to turn in their homework. And so, you know, they're out for the first five minutes, which is fine. And then I try to remember, hey guys, put your phones away. But you know, when they're working on quiet, you know, independent work, you know, kid, I'll have her phone out. And they're like, oh, well, I'm turning something in. And are you really turning something in? No, because you were scrolling on social media. So this new policy that I'm gonna have for all of my classes, even the classes that don't abuse the policy, but that way it's just straight across the board five minutes at the start of class, as soon as five minutes is up, the phones go away and they stay away until the bell rings to dismiss. And I am not going to have any, there's no warnings about this. I'm going to follow our school's um, procedures. So our policy for this is the first time the kids put, so we have, it's over on this side over here, um, a little like cell phone pouch. If I catch the kids with their cell phone, they're going to put it in the pouch and it's just a warning. The second time it goes in the pouch, I email parents and they get what's called a minor in our um like discipline log and it's just more of a I'm just logging it and saying hey this is the second time I'm checking my uh, my list up there okay and then the third time 
it still goes in the pouch. I contact parents and it's a major, which is like a referral and they get a lunch detention from that. The fourth time, same thing, phone goes in the pocket, call home, I write a referral and they get an after school detention. And the fifth time goes in the pocket again, I message home, they get another referral and they the office, and I'm not sure if myself is included, I'm not really sure, but they have a parent meeting and then they go from there. So I am really gonna enforce that this semester it was more just like put your phones away and I'm just I'm tired of it and they're juniors and seniors they should be able to follow the policies it's not hard um, so I'm really going to enforce that this semester. Another policy and it's more of something that I'm really just going to remind them about and I'm going to stress more is when you're absent you are still responsible for the material and you are still responsible for the assignment and it is still due on the assigned due date unless you're gone for an extended period of time that is completely different but we run on a block schedule so if the kids are absent on monday they can come in and grab the assignment on tuesday and still have it done for wednesday and these are things that i'm going to remind the kids and say this is where all this stuff is i put a blank copy of almost everything on canvas anyway so the kids have no excuse but they're using it as an excuse and they come in and it's well what did i miss no, everything's on Canvas and that's something that I'm really going to push with them. And with these being college classes, that's how it works in college, right? When you're in college and you miss a class, you don't come up to your professor and be like, oh, what did I miss? No, you get the stuff that's online, you do the notes online, you find the homework, you complete the homework, and you have it ready for the next time you're in class. So that's something that I'm really going to enforce this semester. Really not a whole lot of exceptions to that rule this semester. Another issue with homework I had, because the kids are using their cell phones to turn this in, you know, cell phone service and reception is a little bit spotty sometimes. And so I'm constantly having those kids that are like, oh, well, my phone won't let me turn it in. Can I just turn it in tonight? So another policy that I'm gonna implement is if you know your phone does not turn things in when you're in the classroom, you need to have it turned in before you come to my room. You need to make sure that you turn it in in a place where you know it will turn in. Because if it is marked late in Canvas, it is just going to be marked late. And this is just part of that holding them accountable and knowing, hey, these are obstacles that I have and these are challenges that I have. So I need to make sure that I find a way to still get things done in time. And I feel like that's just really teaching them a life skill. Homework is only 10% of their overall grade. So it's not like, you know, constantly having late is really going to hurt them in the long run. But I feel like Sometimes they don't quite understand that, but it's teaching them that accountability. And I feel like that's a huge thing, especially the majority of my kids going off to college really need that accountability piece. So that's something that I'm gonna remind them of and tell them and say, hey, this is just how it's going to be. Another big change that I'm making is I came into this school year because it's a policy that I've always had. Just, hey, you know, if you need help, send me an email. I will email you back, even if it's, you know, at night, even if it's over the weekend. And, you know, I'm available every morning before school and I'm available, I'll stay after school most days. And I'm not gonna do that anymore because I feel like kids were telling me they were gonna come in a lot and then just not show up. Or they would send me an email, you know, at 1129 and they'd be like, well, why didn't you respond to my email? You know, it's late. So I am only going to be available certain days in the morning. Now I get to school about 7, 7, 10 and kids don't come in until 8, 10. So I'm here an hour early. I'm not going to give them all of that time anymore every day. So on black days, I have my planned period, first period. So I'm always up in the math office working and I'm not going to try to make sure I remember, oh, head to a classroom to meet kids. So on my gold days where I start up in not this classroom, but the other classroom that I'm in, I'm going to tell the kids that I will be available starting at 745. So the kids can get in the building before that 810 or 805 um, door open as long as you know they're meeting a teacher so i'll tell the kids yes i will be available in that room upstairs gold days starting at 7 45 no earlier that way i can still have my mornings and i'm not just going crazy and then i will also tell them that i will only be available after school two days a week and that'll be wednesdays and thursdays but Wednesdays may change, you know, and just let them know this is it because again, they were really starting to take advantage of that and tell me they'd come in and then they wouldn't and I'd just be sitting around waiting for them and not being productive. And so that's going to change. And again, that's going to get them used to 
their college professors having specific office hours rather than just being available all the time. The last change that I'm going to make, and this is gonna be a bigger change for the kids, just a weird change for the kids, but I think it's more, well, it's for both the kids and for me, and this is about tardies. So when the kids are tardy, they come in, you know, if they're tardy for first period or they come late to school, they'll come with a little pass, otherwise they're just tardy. And we mark them tardy in our attendance system. And then we have, you know, the different levels of tardy. So the first time it's a warning, the second time it's just that minor in, our management system so again it's really nothing um, and I let parents know the third time it's a major I let parents know and it's so like a referral major referral um, I let the parents know and then they have a lunch detention so it's kind of that same process as the um, the cell phone policy but the problem was that because tardies happen so much more frequently than the cell phone policy um, I was really just having trouble keeping track and I would have like eight kids tardy in one class. And it's like, oh my gosh, that was just a lot to keep track of. And then when I would email parents, some of my students would be like, oh, well, I didn't know that I was tardy. You hadn't started teaching yet. I'm like, cause you know, the bell rang, therefore you're tardy. So what I did, and this was something that my old school used and I really liked it. So it's call this the pink tardy sheet cause it's on a pink piece of paper. So the tardy sheet sign in. So the students are gonna put their name, which class just so, you know, I know pre-calc college algebra, the block period and then their Dean. So their Dean is sort of, it's the, um, it's kind of, it's not really an assistant principal, but they're the ones that are speaking to them and assigning the consequences. So that I need to know who to send at that electronic one to. And then I'm gonna put the date and when they're tardy, they're gonna sign. This way, when they're tardy, I have a record that they knew that they were tardy and I can see, oh, okay, you know, this was their seventh tardy. It's gonna be another major. And then whatever the office decides to do for that particular child, I have no control over but at least I have that list and I can look, you know, anytime a kid is tardy, I can. So I've got this binder and I've got it set up with, um, with my classes. So anytime a kid is tardy and they sign it, I'm just gonna stick it in the front. And then on my plan period, so if it's, I haven't had plan period that day, I'll do it that day. If my plan period already happened, I'll just do it my next plan period. I'll enter all of those in, just depending whether it's a major, whether it's a minor, I'll contact parents and then I can get those sorted. So I'm hoping just having this tardy sheet is going to, first of all, help me keep track of who's been tardy, how many times, what step I need to do, because I've had kids have like 20 tardies and I just haven't kept up with it. So part of that is, you know, because I was new and I wasn't sure how to do it at the beginning and then I just, it became too overwhelming for me. So I'm hoping that this will help me keep track of that. And I'm hoping that it's gonna have the kids, you know, have that accountability so that they can see, hey, I've signed, you know, this many, and this is how many, you know, whatever consequences that I've had. So we'll see, we'll see how it works. Um, I'm gonna hold myself to keeping up with this all semester. I know I can because I have used this for 17 years and it was wonderful. So those are the different changes that I am going to make second semester. I will definitely fill you guys in maybe close to spring break time to let you know how all of these different changes are going and if there are any others that I'm like, shoot, this is something that I definitely need to change um, or this is something that I don't like and I need to go back to. So I would love to know, as you started or as you're going to get ready to start your second semester, are there new things that you guys implemented second semester that you didn't first semester just based on, you know, how things were going and what you felt like needed to happen? I would love to know. Leave comments below and let's, you know, share some ideas with each other. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in following along more with my journey as I teach, please subscribe. I do upload videos every Friday, but you can hit that notification bell to be notified that next time a video goes live. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.